for this week's episode of Recipe Share, a program on AADL-TV, where we take a few minutes to talk about recipes in a featured category. Today's category is Party Platters. I'm Beth, and I'm joined by Katie and Elizabeth to tell us about their recipes. So Katie, tell us about your party platter. Okay, I will. So the party platter that I chose to do for this was a deviled egg bar. And, um, it's very simple, but it was really nice. So there's lots of recipes and ideas about this online. You really can do like anything with it, depending on what you like and what you have on hand. So I just kind of took a bunch of ideas and ran with it. Um, kind of obviously the first thing that you do here is make your deviled eggs. Uh, but you want to make like a really simple deviled egg recipe. Like sometimes I'll put like horseradish or pickle juice or something in there, but you want this to just be plain. So you basically hard boil your eggs. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that I have a little hard boiled egg machine, one of those little ones, and I absolutely love it. So it makes the perfect eggs without you having to really do anything. So I made up a bunch of eggs, um, 12 of them, uh, and then you cool the eggs, you peel them, you slice them lengthwise, you pull the yolk out, put that in a bowl, and then you put your egg whites on your platter. I wanted to show you guys my platter because I love it. It's cute and vintage looking, um, but you see it's smaller, so it only holds the 12 eggs. So I also have this cool thing. This holds deviled eggs in your fridge. You can see it's got like little egg shaped bits inside. So I just like put the extras in here and then replenish as necessary throughout the party. Um, so then you mash your egg yolks with a fork with mayonnaise, mustard, vinegar, salt, pepper. And for the first time ever, I actually used a piping bag to pipe the egg yolks in. I just received one as a gift and hadn't had a chance to use it before. So this is the first time I'd like not been struggling with spoons and stuff. So it was really cool. I really suggest doing that if you have a piping bag or get one there like pretty cheap. Um, then you just sprinkle your eggs with paprika. And the fun part is you lay your platter out and then you surround it, it with little bowls and tongs with your toppings. And I've got a picture of how I laid it out. You can obviously use any toppings that you want, but what I used was dill, chives, chopped cooked bacon, smoked salmon, capers, diced red onion, and sliced black olives. And people really enjoyed trying different flavor and texture combinations and adding different things. Um, one of my friends said these were the best deviled eggs he's ever had. And I attribute that completely to the variety of toppings that were available, but it was a really cool compliment to hear. And um, we definitely had to like stop ourselves from eating these because this is like an appetizer <laughs> for the party. So we're like, there is more food coming. Let's not stuff ourselves with deviled eggs, but um, they were huge, huge hit and so easy. So I would definitely be doing this for parties in the future. It was great. A really good idea. It's I love that idea. I I, I never heard of it before. I love it. Yeah, yeah I love deviled eggs, but I've always just made them and flavored them in different ways, like you said, but yes. that's it. So the idea of being able to kind of make them your own is awesome and fun. And so I love how easy it's just like great easy make you know people are going to love it because they're modifying them in the way they want and yum this sounds kind of wild I mean I'm thinking right away I was thinking about doing it for our family but also like my Henry's second birthday is coming up and I'm thinking would that be a something for a two-year-old I mean it could be I don't know does I'll ask Kaylee does he like eggs yes um I think so. And it's kind of, it's a morning thing. Anyway, we don't need to go into that, but um, <laughs> I just like the idea that would, it kind of goes with the theme. So, um, but also just for our own family. That's so cool. Yeah. I love yeah. That. You got to love double that. 
I don't have a deviled egg. I don't have one of those. I, I'm getting one. I, I've lived too long without one. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys liked that idea. It was really fun. Um, Elizabeth, tell us about your party platter. Okay, so I struggled a little bit with this. The first issue was, um, this is going to make me sound lame, but like I haven't really had an occasion to make a platter in the few months that we've known we were doing this theme. I've only really done smaller gatherings of like four people. I haven't, and so I was kind of struggling because I was like, well, a platter, you know, you don't want to make one. I really, you want to make one for more people. So I was like, well, geez, you know, what am I going to do here? So I was kind of trying to scale it down because I just didn't have an occasion to like make a large platter. Also, I've been trying to eat more vegetables because um, it's a good thing to do, whatever. So I was trying to figure out what to do. And I ended up making kind of a small, like a scaled down version of a Mediterranean um, platter. So what I did is I made two dips. I made tzatziki and I made my own hummus. Um, the, my tzatziki recipe is my mom's. It's very simple. You basically shred a cucumber, put it in a bowl with a little bit of salt, let it sit, squeeze out the water. And then you um, grate a clove of garlic and um, slice up some fresh dill and um, add a Greek yogurt and um, a few squeezes of lemon juice. And you just mix that all up. I don't know how authentic it is, but we've always made it that way and it's very delicious. Um, so that's my, my family tzatziki. And then I made hummus very, I'm not even going to describe it exactly how you would with chickpeas, you know, in a blender, chickpeas, tahini, garlic, lemon juice, a little bit of salt, whatever. <clears throat> and then, um, so I had my two dips and then I sliced up a bunch of different veggies, um, which was fine. Some more Mediterranean than others, but you know, I had carrots, I had some radish, I had um, more cucumber. Um, I had some bell peppers that was really good. And then I also had olives um, to dip in. And I love um, just those big green olives, Castle Vetrano, so good. Um, those are my faves. So I had a nice bowl of those. And um, of course, some um, pita. So that was, I kind of arranged it and it was very good, nothing wild, but it was healthy and a great, I made it for um, one of the football games that happened a few months ago or whatever. And um, it was super good. And it felt, what I liked about it is like, it felt fairly light. So I was just kind of snacking on it for several hours, but I was never like, oh, like I have to stop eating. Um, so it was really yummy. And, um, you know, I'll do it again. It was easy. Those dips are good. And um, yeah, I, uh, I enjoyed it. And I, you could certainly scale it up for a larger crowd as well. And, you know, maybe I thought about making a third dip, like an olive tapenade or something, but I just didn't have the, I didn't have the need for it. Um, but you could certainly expand it and make it more Mediterranean. I was looking up some like ideas and someone was like, oh, you should get like marinated peppers that are, you know, in kind of like a Mediterranean type flavoring or whatever, like sun-dried tomatoes. And you could totally do all that as well. So I feel like mine was a little lame, but it was good. And it was, uh, it felt really healthy and like good to have out um, balancing some like heavier game foods. So yeah, that's what I did. Well, you know me, I love dip. So I mean, also the way your Siddiqui, I, I guess I don't grate my cucumber. I'm realizing I could, yeah, I don't know, I guess chop it, but Hey, yeah, I say, yeah, but, um, I could totally make that. And I'm thinking of centering some kind of meal tonight around that. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's delicious. Yeah. It's I love nice. Sleeky. That sounds really good. And yeah, there, and the hummus, of course. Absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, there's everything right with having a veggie platter at a football game party because it's always super heavy food. So I'm always looking for that. So I think it's great. Yeah, I'm all over that. I'm I'm always eating the the veggies. You yeah, know? it's good to have that balance. I feel like totally and our football season went a little long this year it did we were it was it was ongoing so yeah so okay all um, right you're excited I, about it. Later. Right. so 
I started with this. I wanted to to um, cure my own salmon. I was going to make a bagel platter. But since it uh, came so close to Super Bowl Sunday, Super Bowl weekend, um, I, I I did. So I made the gravlax from. Ooh. And so it ended up being a Scandi, a Scandi uh, platter. Um, and I had a lot of fun with it. Now I, the same, I did not have any, I didn't have any large groups to, uh, to share this with, but it worked out because, and I, I'm, I sent, we don't usually share our pictures right away, but I'm, I sent you the pictures because I made one, uh, on the, the first night and it takes like three days to cure the salmon and you just have to cover it with uh, so also it's sashimi grade or sushi grade salmon uh so even if it didn't work i you, i wouldn't it wasn't going to be poisonous um but uh but it, it, uh so anyway you know you just uh put uh equal parts of salt and sugar on heavily and i i have pictures of that too and i i'll save those for the the show um and i got that from a woman's uh website recipe tin eats by a woman named Naji and or wait it was Nagi Nagi she's Australian um born in Japan I just went on her site just I mean I kept referring to it for three days you know but I never bothered to go uh so she has a food bank in in uh, Sydney and she makes like really good food for it so i guess she's pretty well known in in Australia all right so that's her um gravlax i i did that for a couple of days i also made some sourdough crackers with some rye so sourdough rye crackers i got this recipe from breadtopia and it was for um the crackers but with theirs was with black sesame seeds and I I just had uh the regular toasted sesame seeds and then the other thing I added was that I made was a pickled onion and that I just did it took literally like half an hour and I did it like on the on the fly um and then the platters that I created so the first night uh just for an appetizer for Kurt and me it was that and we had some pickled beets which I don't like but um and also cream cheese because I I just salmon cream cheese, you know, and the crackers. It was all really good. I don't remember what else I put on there, but um eggs. Oh, hard boiled eggs that I sliced. And um, and the whole reason I sent pictures was so I would remember. But uh then another the next day, or it was on Super Bowl Sunday, I made a to-go one for my brother and sister-in-law, just they were having uh plumbing problem so I just thought I'd treat them with that and so they really appreciated it and then on the actual Super Bowl not that we were watching it but had the kids over the, and made a little platter with you know with uh, with that and stuff that they would eat too so I stretched it out and uh, I was the only thing I really didn't like about how the salmon I mean the salmon it tasted wonderful I, but I just wasn't able to cut it in slices like I'd hoped and I even got my knife sharpened but whatever it was it still was great and actually it worked out because then it went a lot further because there were smaller pieces so anyway that was it my Scandi uh party platter that is such a fun idea. I love it. And kudos to you for taking on the gravlax is one of those things that like, I'm sure it's not that hard, right? You yeah. Can, it takes some time, but like you said, you just cover it, but it feels like something that I would be like daunted to do, you know? Yeah. So I'm really well, happy to hear it turned out. Thank you. Yeah. I, I really had to, to rev myself up for it, for the task. And, and I had to call around for the salmon I I had to get it in hands. Okay. Um, it was twenty five dollars a pound, so I just got one pound. Um, which for that I I didn't do the comparison, but I'm I know that theirs already cured was way more, like way more than that. Sure, for uh -huh. sure. Yeah. So, 
um, yeah, it was a fun way to, to eat the salmon and it was delish. Well, I think it's super impressive. And I also think your pictures are beautiful. So you yeah, know, they're very you. beautiful. Really nice place, so good job. Thanks guys. And that would yeah. be a really nice, um, like breakfast thing too. If you were, yeah. having, like, that would be a really nice brunch. Platter. Yep. Oh, yum. Yeah. 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 I'm pretty sure we ate some of that for a little nibble for brunch, but, um, but otherwise, yeah. Yep. It was, it was a lot of fun. Um, would I make it again? I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I guess for the quantity, and if I had it all in one platter, sure, or maybe, I don't know, hard to say, but I, I Costco's kind of hard to pass up, so, <laughs> you know, anyway, uh, well, thank you, and thanks for watching Recipe Share. Be sure to click the link below to look at the event page on aadl.org to find the recipes we talked about and share your own in the comments. Join us next time. I don't remember what we're doing, but uh, we look forward to seeing what you've been making. So thanks for sharing. Recipe share. Recipe share.